The Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network. The Gateway Ford Frankie DeBusk Show with the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten and head coach Frankie DeBusk. The Frankie DeBusk Show is presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda, the home of the big deal, located on the Elevity Bypass in Greenville. And brought to you in part by Applebee's, your neighborhood bar and grill. Applebee's, eating good in the neighborhood. Sodexo, a worldwide leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. By Green Coach Tours, celebrating their 66th anniversary. By Consumer Credit Union, with three convenient locations in Greenville and Moss High. Creekside Markets, don't pass by, stop by. Pick up a Hunt Brothers Pizza for those football Friday nights or Saturday afternoons, with three locations in Green County. Laughlin Memorial Hospital, whatever you do, do it well. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Morristown, Jonesboro, Johnson City, Cleveland, and Greenville. Grand Rental Station, anything you'll ever need to rent or buy. Special consideration from Comcast Cable. And now, the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. It was the 28th meeting between Tusculum and Mars Hill in the Mountain Border War. The Tusculum Pioneers hadn't lost at home since 1998 to the Mars Hill Lions, but they also didn't have Jonas Randolph. Jonas Randolph was the nation's leading rusher coming into the contest after being held to under 50 yards last week against the LR Bears. Jonas Randolph would run for a school conference record 373 yards in his two games combined against the Pioneers prior. He had 377 yards. It was a big day for Jonas Randolph, another big day for the Pioneer offense. However, the Mars Hill Lions jump up to number two in the regional rankings with their win against the Tusculum Pioneers. Welcome in Pioneer coach Frankie DeBusk. Obviously a day on Saturday that I think a lot of people realize Jonas Randolph, number eight, was going to get the football. Your defense had to know it, but I think he showed just how good he actually was. I was really impressed with how our defense, you know, played there, Brian, especially in the first half, making a lot of plays. I thought we had a good plan going in. Um, uh, we, were, we were getting him on the ground. We were not giving him a lot of success. Um, they made some adjustments, I guess, at halftime and came back out with a completely different mentality, and he had a different mentality, and uh, unfortunately, we, we couldn't even ask him to punt the ball in the second half. He did such a great job, and he's a phenomenal football player, and I said going in, he would get it a bunch, and thought he would touch it about as many times as he did, and was really impressed how we played early. We just didn't finish, and it seems like the same old song and dance uh, for the uh, 2011 football team. I know you're frustrated a little bit because your offense performed again at a very high level. Uh, you've got three running backs that'll be our players of the week this week that didn't take a loss this week in, in yardage, and you have to be impressed with that and their ability to run the football. Well, really impressed with our offensive staff, quite frankly. We're playing with a mixed match of players that we didn't intend to be playing with at this late in the season, and we're still finding ways to be successful. Um, a lot of new names are, are getting popped up and making some plays here and there, and just really impressed at how we've we've kept our composure and maintained. And uh, we, you know, we're still scoring 37 points in in game nine uh, with our our quarterback that was a third string quarterback going into the season, who's really playing phenomenal. And I'm really happy for for Slavin the way he's performing. But um, I thought our offense had a really good game plan. As as you note early, we weren't producing very well at all as an offense. Uh, same old song and dance. And then the second half made some adjustments, did some good things at halftime, and came back out and scored a lot of points. Just unfortunately, we didn't score enough to, to get a win. The Tusculum Pioneers fall 47 to 37 to the Mars Hill Lions. We'll break it down when the Frankie DeBun Show continues right after this, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville or on the web at homeofthebigdeal.com. 
Applebee's two for 20 is back and fresher than ever. Whoa. Hey, Chris. Nice. Hi, Jesse. Hey. Ready to order? Yep, two for 20. One appetizer, two entrees, and layers of fresh flavor. So who's paying this week? Uh, call it in the air. Tails. <laughs> Pony up, Palmer. So come on in for new favorites like new creamy chicken fettuccine carbonara, new bruschetta chicken, or classics like the seven ounce house sirloin. That's one appetizer, two entrees, 20 bucks. You got off easy, my friend. It's the freshest two for 20 yet, only at Applebee's. Now serving half price appetizers late night. Laughlin Memorial Hospital provides innovative, caring, compassionate service to their patients and the community through integrity and honesty in all that they do. Laughlin Memorial Hospital in Greenville since 1939. Whatever you do, do it well. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staten. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBusk Show, presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. The Tusculum Pioneers and the Mars Hill Lions battle from Pioneer Field as Tusculum gets to finish out the season two of their last three. Again, Tusculum hadn't lost to Mars Hill it's 1998 at home, five-game winning streak. As a matter of fact, these games have been rather close over the last couple of years. But Tim Clifton, his Mars Hill team, looking for a conference championship. It would be his first in his South Atlantic Conference coaching career. Would the Pioneers be able to throw in a little bit of a cog? Well, let's take a look at your quarter highlights. We take a look at the first quarter presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. Yeah, I told uh, Tim Clifton after the game, they got a they got a really good football team. I'm impressed with how well he's done and uh, you know they've, they've made some improvements over there to their facilities and I think it's helped them get a few better players uh, but uh, their staff always seems to do a good job of putting a good team on the field. There's Justin Arrington, one of our seniors there, number 20 from Creekside High School in Atlanta, keeping Randolph maintained and getting them on the ground. Felt like we had a good game plan. Our kids were making some plays and we were, we were clogging them up and we were hanging on to him. And, I uh, was excited about how we started the ball game defensively. This is the uh, first drive offensively for Mars Hill. The Pioneers were, hel were held to a three and out. And again, not a lot of running room for Jonas Randolph right up the middle for a yard. Terrence Smith, Hill, Steve Jibison with the stop prior. Desmond Rayford and Fred Rez Terrell right there with the stop after a gain of three. Rugby style punter, B.J. Richmond gets the ball out of there and it will be down inside the 10 yard line. It's just what you have to worry about. So the Pioneers have the football first and 10 from inside their own 10 yard line. And Tuscalum comes out with the running game that was very effective uh, throughout the entire contest. Here's Fred Jones. Yeah, Freddie Jones did great early for us carrying the football. Uh, our kids up front are taking some pride in blocking. And here's Freddie putting a pop on one of their safeties there and letting them know we were meaning business and happy for Fred. Fred's a senior from down in Augusta, Georgia. And, uh, probably hadn't played quite as much as he would like to in his career, but very steady, very consistent, very uh, strong Christian young man that's going to be a good father and a good husband. This, one of the great, great catches of the day, Rashad had two or three of them again. Uh, this phenomenal catch by Rashad Carter. Made that look easy, but his hands are so doggone big. That's probably why he was able to get a hold of it and make it look good. And good ball there by Slavin to, to keep us going. So it was on second down and 10. Carter for 42 yards. Look for him deep once again. And then looking for Wesley Powell deep. And then uh, right here, you expect him to make this catch. And when things are going good, he usually does make that catch. Rashad Carter is expected to make that catch. He would probably tell you if he was sitting here now, he should have made, he should have made it. It was a drop ball. Uh, wasn't an easy catch, but it hit both his hands. And he's a good enough player to make that. But uh, again, that's sort of how it's going. And uh, we almost got one pinned inside the five. That's Byron Butler, one of our true freshmen from uh, Louisiana, New Orleans, and they're getting in on some action. And told Byron he'd be a good player one day if he just hang in there and do what he's supposed to do and what he's coached to do. So Mars Hill has the ball, no score here in this opening quarter. First and 10, Randolph goes for three, stopped by Arrington and Finley. And then Mars Hill tries to come out and go deep, and they had a couple of drop balls. Thank goodness they did, back-to-back -back drop balls. Went to the same uh, side again, same plan, and uh, this would have been a little bit more challenging catch, but that young man I'm sure is saying right now they should have made the catch. But we do a good job defensively stopping them, making them punt it again, and you know feeling pretty good about how we're playing. We're, we've held them, we're, we've, they've punted it twice. You know, not playing very good on offense right now. We still don't have any points, and we got to do a little better and perform a little, a little differently. After that drive, the Pioneers would go four plays, 15 yards, have to punt it. Mars Hill would get the ball back and actually drive for a field goal. And so on the ensuing kickoff, Ryan Marshall would bust out for his season-long 30-yard run up to the 50-yard line. Great job up front blocking. Uh, those guys, Pat Aiken and uh, David Davis and uh, Jacob Bridwell, true freshman from Burns, playing guard for us. Just uh, by doing, doing what he's asked to do, and Brian hits that hole, makes something good happen, and here's Slavin, sort of, one thing he's got, he's got a feel for the game, and doesn't make any mistakes, and converts oh, a negative into offense. a little Number positive there, unfortunately, we get, get called for holding, but they, they decline it, I think it makes it third and long. 
And the Pioneers would look to go deep on third down and eight. Not very effective on third downs on the day. Not as effective as this offense would need to be as Slavin would look deep for Rashad Carter and again in double coverage. Yeah, I think at halftime we were one for seven on third downs and uh, we missed a couple of deep balls and had we hit them and had we converted on those third down plays, we're probably uh, talking about a completely different outcome of, of the football game. But uh, again, uh, they've played well in the first quarter defensively and sputtered a little bit offensively. The Dunskill and Pioneers at the end of the first quarter. Trail Mars Hill, 3-0. We're back with more of the Frankie DeBunch Show, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Dean, what's wrong? We all want to go to the game, but I just don't think they have a car big enough for all of us. Don't worry, Dean. My dad's inside Gateway right now buying us a new SUV that can fit all of us. What do you think, guys? Yeah, let's go! Hey, Ty, you ready to go to the game? Yeah, I'm ready to go, Dad, but we have some new people wanting to go to the game. Well, let's go! Yeah! I see you down below. I'm Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBusk, asking you, like I do my son Ty, to support the Tusculum College Athletics all year long. And for your next car buying experience, please visit Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Go Pioneers! You are Greenville Light and Power System, an electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Green Coach Charters and Tours has been proudly serving the traveling public for 65 years and is the official carrier of Tunchkillum College. If you have never traveled by Green Coach, may we invite you to join them for an exciting travel adventure. Visit online at greencoach.com. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staten. At the end of the first quarter, the Pioneers trail by a score of 3-0. It's time now to take a look at our second quarter highlights presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. As we pick up the coverage, the Tusculum Pioneers trail 6 to nothing. Yeah, you know, again, we're not performing like we'd like to there and scoring points, although we're, we're running the ball hard. We're converting uh, second downs, and, you know, I think this is Freddie again sticking his nose up in there. And might have been Brian. I can't tell. They both look very, very similar. But... Tory here doing a good job, uh, not forcing the football. Just that one got away from him a little bit. Uh, I'm sure he'd like to have that one back, but uh, get a feel for the game. Good job protecting up front. This is a good throw about to Zambion Smith, one of our sophomores from South Carolina area. And uh, I think Brian then, or uh, Mark then decides we're going to try to keep some things toward our sideline and flip it over here and get a few more yards. On third down and a yard, Marshall would go for two yards and then a play that took a little while to develop. Good blocking, Marshall with his career-long reception. Great decision there, good call uh, from the sidelines. Good execution by Brian Marshall. Thank goodness Brian's a junior and we'll get him back next year from Little Wall High School down near Chattanooga. Slaving there from Oneida. Uh, from Boy Redneck, I call him, makes a good decision, good throw, great protection up front, and gives us some points. Marshall finished with five catches, 79 yards, and a touchdown. He also led the team with 58 yards rushing on seven carries and also a score on the rushing side. So the Pioneers lead 7-6. to six. Old Mars Hill to a three and out. Come back out from the 40. Look deep for Xavion Smith. Wind at their back and then put in the true freshman B.J. Spradlin who runs for some tough yards on this day. Really impressed with B.J. Uh, you know, he oh, bought his time great. and he's really doing well. He's understanding what we need. And one thing B.J.'s got is he, he's, he's hard-nosed. He finishes north and south and... Uh, I think our offensive line get a little excited when they see him come in the game. And you know, here's the things he's doing is, is people don't realize is, is those running backs got to get out and block for us. And there we throw it to Deontay and trying to convert. And uh, you know, we're, we take a shot deep here. We've got Zambian. We just overthrow him a little bit. I think the wind did carry that one along and decide to punt it here uh, going in. Dimitri Holmes, the talented true freshman for Mars Hill, uh, one of the top punt returners in the league, just didn't have a chance to return one on the day because of what Rossetti was able to do and pin Mars Hill deep. So Mars Hill would have the ball deep in their own territory and come out with a little anticipated trickery from Tim Clifton. Yeah, we said he would get us on a trick play. Tim seems to always have something drawn up for everybody that he plays, and he got us here. We've got to be a little bit more prepared, a little bit more patient. And our young players back there in the secondary got to stay home and do what we're, what we're coached to do. So it would be Mars Hill taking a 13-7 to lead after that touchdown and the point after, which, by the way, was good, but more on that. Mars Hill would have the ball. Randolph would run for nothing, and then Nick Smith with a big pressure on the quarterback. It was a great play there earlier by Brian Alexander and a great play here by Nick Smith. 
uh, both sophomores on the field for us and looking forward to those two guys continuing to grow up and become better players. And here they get a hold, uh, trying to hold Laronte Archie, who's another sophomore uh, from Atlanta, Georgia. So we're very young over there and making some plays here. Uh, we need to. Some of these games uh, defensively for the Tusculum Pioneers, big games for Nick Smith with 10, ca 10 tackles, which is a career best for him, including that sack tackle for loss. And Brian Alexander, the tackle for loss that you saw was the only time that they held Jonas Randolph behind the line of scrimmage. And at the end of the first half, the Tusculum Pioneers trail the Mars Hill Lions by a score of 13 to 7. But hang on, this third quarter is about to get very, very interesting. We're back with more of the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville or on the web at homeofthebigdeal.com. Coach, what makes a winning team? A winning team is individuals that are working toward one common goal. Coach, for over 30 years, Andrew Johnson Bank has been a winning team here in Greene County. It has always been our goal to provide superior service to our customers. Andrew Johnson Bank will never quit providing extra effort to make loyal customers in the community. Thank you, Coach DeBus. Thank you, Monica. Andrew Johnson Bank scores points with friendly customer service, top-notch bank products, and convenient locations. Tusculum College and Andrew Johnson Bank are a winning team. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Showtime. Uh -huh. You know what it is. Everything we do, we do it big. Uh -huh. Screaming that's not when we step up on the field. That's not a small town, but we still do it very big. Back in ours, back in ours, back in ours, back in ours. We grind all for the rings with the diamonds on it. Back in ours, back in ours, back in ours, back in ours. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Well, at the end of the first half, the much-anticipated high-scoring shootout just didn't happen, hadn't developed. Well, we hadn't gone into the second half yet where both offenses were able to make their adjustments. So let's go there now. The third quarter, brought to you by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. I said it earlier, Brown. They, uh, they must have seen something we were doing defensively, and we must have seen something they were doing defense. We start the game, or start the half here, they get the ball, very first play, fumble it. We get on it. Man, what a what a good feeling there. And I think Nick Smith comes out of there with the fumble. Just a, a great job being where we're supposed to be and giving us the football in great field position. Now we end up driving down here and kicking a field goal. Uh, I would like for us to put uh, some, a touchdown on the board, but fortunately we, we do have a good kick, a good solid kicker that's doing some good things for us in Logan Cornelius. Tusculum opens in that small bone, and Fred Jones for a yard, Slavin rushes for seven, Jones for four, Marshall you just saw there for three yards, then B.J. Spradlin straight ahead on second and seven, picks up the first down, it is not a fumble, just so that you're first curious down. there, so it's first down and ten from the uh, 16, and like to see Jones kind of continue to go outside there, probably has big yards, but Marshall was able to catch up to him there, and then uh, maybe a somewhat of a busted player, just a good Marshall defense. No, we, we, we missed the backside cut off, and uh, got in there and caused some ruckus. We got to do a little better job up front in that particular play and uh, puts us in, in third and long. And Slavin's doing a good job of, of trying to be smart here and not force the football like for him to stuck that one on Deontay's chest and give us a chance to score. But send in our true freshman kicker, Logan Cornelius, who uh, comes through and actually was a little sick on Saturday, but overcame that and got us a big kick there. We needed those three points. Nine plays, just 22 yards, but I believe now Cornelius 10 of 15 on the year in the field goal department for the Tusculum Pioneers again as a true freshman. And so here's Jonas Randolph. The uh, ensuing kickoff, Luke Cruz incomplete to Holmes, and then Randolph goes for 53 yards. Good player. He, uh, you know, those great running backs, Brian, when you give it to them and give it to them and give it to them, they just get better and better and better. And obviously that's what happened in this ball game. Here's Nick Smith, the uh, sophomore from over at Seymour High School. That is his seventh block of the year at just 
I'm just amazed that he has that knack for doing those things. And I don't think people realize how hard it is to block a kick, much less seven in uh, in nine ball games. So proud of Nick and his efforts. But he walked in. Uh, he just he, they I didn't know. even block. You think know. by now they would they would know. All right, so the Pioneer offense has it down 19 to 10. Slavin finds Marshall for nine, and it looked as if Marshall's day was done. More on that coming up as he took a big hit from Rudy Cabral and Jasper Mason. Second down in the yard, Jones goes for five. First and ten, Slavin would uh, scramble the pocket and pick up nine yards. Yeah, good job here by, by Slavin getting us the first down, and, uh, or close to the first down, not, you're not forcing it. And I think that's Freddie there hopping around getting his first down. You know, now we're without Brian and we're without uh, uh, Marcus. Foster, so we're having to be pretty creative offensively, and here's Slavin throwing to Big West Powell. It's uh, West is a 6'10 true freshman from Alabama, getting his first career catch uh, as a pioneer. And hopefully, his future is going to be exceptionally bright here at Tuscum College. But uh, great protection up front. There's big Dustin Moorhead keeping him out of the face of uh, Tory Slavin. Uh, just we're doing our part. It's a great catch by Deontay Gist in traffic. Deontay's has so much courage and confidence and goes up and may, that's hard to do. People don't realize how truly how hard that is, but just does a great job catching it in traffic. Fred Jones initially can't get into the end zone, but then after a nice little stiff arm, he does the job himself for his fifth oh, career okay. rushing okay. touchdown his first this year. Fred and the Tusculum Pioneers close the gap to 1917, eight plays, 62 yards for the Tusculum Pioneers getting into the end zone. Unfortunately there, Freddie uh, scored, which was good, but he uh, banged up his shoulder and we didn't see him for the rest of the day. So we're just a few plays away from Coach Caleb Slover, our running back coach, having to suit up and, and play running back. We're losing them left and right here, but uh, uh, BJ's in the game. This is probably one of the, the, one of the few bad decisions Slavin actually really made on the day. Uh, he needs to eat that or flip it upfield. we got some other options for him. But great hustle by Rashad Carter getting on the football. It's 26 to 17, as you saw Randolph go in from four yards. Mars Hill has 11 plays here in the second half. Randolph had it eight times, and then Torrey Slavin. Big dog. Big dog. <laughs> big right there. Dog he won award. the big dog for the week on that hit. First time we've ever had a quarterback win the big dog. But Slavin ducked his shoulder and, uh, and trucked that guy from Mars Hill to win the big dog award for the week. Brandon Edmond ate it. And then another great catch. This seems like we have one of these slow-mos every single week for Rashad Carter. Phenomenal throw. We just tell him to give him a chance. And an unbelievable well, catch. We get the big gum thing in the end zone. He's feeling really good about that. Just uh, doing what we're coached to do. And Rashad Carter is a special football player. And it looks like Zach Self's doing a great job with the camera here, getting us some great footage, great shot, great slow mo. Uh, happy for those guys to be able to have some success. Pioneers cut the gap 26 24 with the point, but it took just one play after the kickoff for the Mars Hill Lions. You just couldn't keep any momentum. No, we just we get close and couldn't get it with uh, where we needed to, to try to take the lead. It feels like I've said that on a few other shows where we would get close and couldn't get it within a touchdown. But we got to get him on the ground right there. We got two or three guys just point blank missing the tackle. He's a really good player, but we're not uh, we're not doing our part uh, keeping him from from getting a touchdown, having success, and uh, we're uh, we're not we're just not playing at that tempo we need to on that side of the ball. Mars Hills Jonas Randolph right there in that third quarter. They ran 14 offensive plays. He touched it 11 times. They lead 33 to 24. He ran for a school conference record 373 yards, also a school and league best 49 carries. And you haven't even seen the fourth quarter yet. That's when we come back with more of the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. Dean, what's wrong? We don't want to go to the game, but I just don't think they have a car big enough for all of us. Don't worry, Dean. My dad's inside Gateway right now buying us a new SUV that can fit all of us. What do you think, guys? Yeah, let's, let's go. go! Hey, Ty, you ready to go to the game? Yeah, I'm ready to go, Dad, but we have some new people wanting to go to the game. Well, let's go! Yeah! I know you can go, world. I'm Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBusk, asking you, like I do my son Ty, to support the Tusculum College Athletics all year long. And for your next car buying experience, please visit Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. Go Pioneers! Applebee's 2 for 20 is back and fresher than ever. Whoa! Hey Chris, nice. hi Jesse. Hey. Ready to order? Yep, 2 for 20. One appetizer, two entrees, and layers of fresh flavor. So who's paying this week? Uh, call it in the air. Tails. <laughs> 
Mahoney of Palmer. So come on in for new favorites like new creamy chicken fettuccine carbonara, new bruschetta chicken, or classics like the seven ounce house sirloin. That's one appetizer, two entrees, 20 bucks. You got off easy, my friend. It's the freshest two for 20 yet, only at Applebee's. Now serving half price appetizers late night. Anything you'll ever need to rent or buy is at Grand Rental Station. Business, commercial, or residential, from forklifts to backhoes to tents, party goods, wedding supplies, and much more. On the Andrew Johnson Highway in Greenville, Grand Rental Station, 639-6160. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk. The special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network. Once again, the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staden. Tusculum Pioneers Trail going into the fourth quarter. We pick up our coverage presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda, as the Mars Hill Lions have the ball deep in Pioneer territory. Again, Brian, we're starting to do some really good things offensively and we're starting to miss tackles defensively. And Jonas Randolph makes it uh, look pretty easy. And I uh, thought we did a good job making an adjustment here to keep a certain play from hitting us so hard. This is one of the adjustments we made. And I think that is Desmond Rayford on the tackle there. Uh, junior Alexander. from Alexander. Is that BA making a play? Better give him credit where credit's due. Congratulations there to Brian. He's uh, Brian's been one of the most productive defensive players we've had all year, and fortunately we get him back for a couple more. The Mars Hill Lions would find their talented true freshman Louis Cruz to Dimitri Holmes for the touchdown to make it 40 to 24. Again, uh, on that drive, that particular drive, Randolph had seven of the nine plays, so 14 of 21 plays in the second half. Randolph has run the football. But the Pioneers would answer. Xavion Smith with a big 43-yard return deep into Mars Hill territory. Great return by Xavion. Just continue to watch him grow up in every ball game he plays. Again, a sophomore and just excited for his future here as a Pioneer and uh, starting to really do some good things for us. And uh, Here we got Brian Marshall back in the game, fortunately, mm -hmm. after hitting somebody bang up. and We throw that one out there to, to Deontay. And, uh, Brian gets out and does some blocking. He and I think it's Rashad Carter doing a good job, or Zambion blocking for us. And uh, Deer Slavin again being smart. I thought this was going to be a touchdown pass from the sidelines. Just missed him a little bit there, but not putting it anywhere other than he can be the only one to get it. And there's some big boys, Josh Stone flying downfield, making a block. Zambion making a block. Deontay making a block. Got guys playing very, very, very unselfish in our situation we're in. You'd think it would be hard for kids to do that, but. Our players are fighting like crazy and still trying to find a way to win. Torrey Slavin passed for 306 yards, two touchdowns. He went 20 for 36, and again, that's zero interceptions for Torrey Slavin and this Pioneer offense since he has been there. A model of consistency, yet to throw an interception in his first 180 career pass attempts. Brian Marshall, banged up ribs and all, would get into the end zone, cut the deficit to 40 to 30. The two-point conversion would fail. So Cornelius would come on to uh, kick it off. And this is something that's also hampered the Pioneers in the kick coverage somewhat this year. And Marcel taking full advantage of really a backup kick returner and Anthony Lewis going for 51 yards. You've got to do better there. We've got to get him on the ground. We can't give him the ball on the other side of the 50-yard line. And I think there was one point in the game our kicker accidentally kicked it out of bounds. And uh, we knew where they were going to get the ball then. Not, not ideal, but uh, we got to do a little better job uh, of maintaining and holding on and taking care of our, our responsibilities. Jonas Randolph all on this drive, six plays, and Jonas Randolph touched it every single time. On first and ten, we go for two. Nick Smith would bring him down. Smith and Jibison on the stop here. Then it's third down and three, and Randolph gets just enough as Jibison and Smith again combine on this stop just inside the ten, but it makes it first down and goal for the conferences and the nation's leading rusher. Sticks it in the end zone there on us, sort of hitting us in the mouth, and uh, we're, not, we're not doing our part. We're acting like we're enjoying it a little bit, unfortunately. we got to find a way to keep that from happening. Here we get called with a hold, and uh, probably was a good call. But, uh, again, Slavin does a good job getting out of the pocket and making good things happen. It's first down and 20. Slavin, though, would come right back, scramble, find Xavion Smith, who would come back and help, and Xavion would pick up the first down himself. Big first down, big play, great play, great, great connection there. But two sophomores on the field from quarterback to receiver. and uh, Great protection up front. Good throw here and good catch by uh, Deontay. Continues to make those catches in, in high traffic. D Gist had eight catches for 90 yards on the day. Finished the game with 180 all-purpose yards. His seventh straight 150-yard performance in all-purpose yardage. Rashad Carter unable to hold on to the pass here. He had 93 yards on four receptions and a touchdown. 
Gist, along with Carter, have combined for 12 receptions on Saturday. They have 391 as a duo. That is just eight catches shy of the Division II all-time national record and two games in which to try to get it done. But the drive continues for the Pioneers. Again, Brian Marshall so banged up, just really wasn't sure he was even going to be able to stay out there and uh, has picked up 11 yards on a carry on third down and three. And then they give it to B.J. Spradlin, who barrels his way towards the end zone. Happy again. B.J.'s running that rock hard. Told Mark to give it to him again. We got down in there inside the two, let the young man score. Uh, B.J.'s bringing a lot of things to the table that we thought he could do and excited about what he can do for our football team. Eight plays, 60 yards. Pioneers tack on the extra point, but it wasn't enough. Mar the uh, ensuing onside attempt was recovered and actually returned by Crumpton of Mars Hill. The final score, 47-37. But just to put the kibosh on the type of day that Jonas Randolph had and not to belittle the Pioneers at all, it was evident he was going to be the focal point. 22 carries for him in the second half of their 33 plays, and of those 33, four of them were right there at the end of the first half or just kind of kneel down, just kind of run out the, the clock type of plays. Mars Hill jumps up to number two in the region this week, Coach, and they win 47-37 against you. I know that defense is probably susceptible, but they're there by virtue of this Super, two, super Regional 2 being so – Filled with so much parity, I think. There's a lot of two loss and three loss teams that are in the top six. There's a lot of good football teams in our region. Uh, the leagues are very, very similar where there's so much competition within each league and everybody's beating everybody. And, you know, I'm on that, that committee and, and wait and see what happens after these last two weeks because there's, <laughs> there's a lot of football still to be played when it comes to making some decisions who's going to go into the postseason. And, you know, Morris Hill's uh, open this week, which will help them. Uh, but they still got to finish with Carson Newman next week, and uh, they got a good team. Hats off to Morris Hill. Really impressed with how they played. I'm impressed with how their coaching staff has, has gotten some players over there. But there's a lot of football to be played. We'll see how this thing pans out. Morris Hill goes to seven and two on the year, five and one in the league. The Tuscaloosa Pioneers fall to two and seven, one and four. They do have Mossy Creek coming up this Saturday. But just to uh, offset the, the day that Jonas had, 373 tied for ninth in Division II history, breaks the previous conference record set. By 344 yards by LR's Leonard Davis against Gardner Webb all the way back in 1993. His 49 carries also set a new conference single game mark, surpassing the 48 posted by Elon's Bobby Hedrick against Newberry all the way back in 1978. So you got to go back uh, a few years for records to be broke for Jonas Randolph, a sure in All American again this year for the Mars Hill Lions. Pioneers fall to Mars Hill 47. We'll meet some of our players of the week, and I'll have our Applebee's chat with Brian Marshall and Fred Jones when we come back with more of the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville or on the web at at home of the big deal .com. Consumer Credit Union. Loans? We can do that. Three locations in Greenville and Mossheim. At Consumer Credit Union, everybody can join. Visit online at consumercreditunion.com. Your Greenville Light and Power System and electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville or on the web at homeofthebigdeal.com. Consumer Credit Union. Loans? We can do that. Three locations in Greenville and Mossheim. At Consumer Credit Union, everybody can join. Visit online at consumercreditunion.com. Your Greenville Light and Power System and electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. 
Visit online at glps.net. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staten. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. Pioneers fall 47 37 to Marseille this past Saturday, but after the game, we had a chance to catch up with two guys who were determined, motivated to come away with a couple of wins over the last two weeks for Tusculum College. Our Applebee's chat with Brian Marshall and Fred Jones. Welcome back, Frankie DeBus TV show. It's time for our Applebee's chat with two of the scatbacks in the backfield for the Pioneers. We'll start with Fred Jones Jr. Fred, a, a tremendous running effort today for this Pioneer team. 12 carries, 50 yards for you. Is that the game plan going in? Uh, game plan really was, was playing on passing it really more than we ended up running it. But when we came in, it was, they were, uh, was our old line was blocking so good. We was like, we might as well run the ball. So just end up running the ball more today. You know, it's 37 points, and everybody's going to say it's good enough to win some football games. You guys frustrated right now? Yeah, it's just, it's just frustrating to lose any time. No matter how many points we put up, just want to win. So, and then this is my last year, so, yeah, it's frustrating. All right, well, let's get out here and get something done. You guys really pounded the football. Did it become a lot easier in the football game to run? Yeah, it was easy. It was pretty easy. Our whole line was working pretty hard. So, and we just all we had to do was just get the ball and run right behind them, so it was easy. <laughs> All right, you're down Foster today, but you saw B.J. Spradlin come in. It's a young kid making some headway. He runs it really hard and really physical. I guess you two very physical runners. Um, uh, what can you tell him uh, in, in your final year? How can you help him become a better runner? All we've been telling him is just keep his pads down. That boy's so big. If he put his pads down, can't nobody stop him. So that's all we've been trying to tell him. Run hard, put your pads down. One man can't tackle you. So he's been working hard. He's going to be a pretty good man for this own team. Lot to play for. Carson Newman Saturday. What would you like to deliver to those guys after what happened last year? Yeah, we got to win. We never won at Carson Newman before, so we're trying to be the first team to win at that place. So even though we can't we can't go to the playoffs, but that game still means a lot to me. I want to win that game. Hey, fabulous game today. Thank you for your time. Appreciate that. All right, it's Fred Jones, 12 carries, 50 yards, and a touchdown, five career touchdowns for him. And now we're joined by Brian Marshall. This is the mystery today. Right, Brian, you get hit. Uh, it was an awkward hit tough devastating like it and it looks as if you were done so what's the story you finished the game um kind of just seeing after freddie got hurt and then when you have a freshman running back it's not saying you don't have trust in him but that's still a lot to put on the freshman to come in you see two of his you know older running backs to get out so i mean it's kind of just a mindset drive where you know your mental your mind got to control your body and the mindset get back in the football game 79 yards receiving, another big day rushing the football. You guys are really running the football real good. You like that small bone set? Does it really cause that much problems for defenses? Yeah, I think it does because, I mean, it's a triple threat. They really don't know where the ball is going to go. And then all of us back there, we all love blocking for each other. So, I mean, we're going to, you know, take, sacrifice our body just to go out there and make sure that Freddie or BJ gets those extra yards. All right, you do have the big touchdown pass. So kind of take me through that because it took a long time for that play to develop. Uh, were you guys just waiting for that matchup, that one-on-one -on -one with you? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Coach Cole, Torrey, they both called touchdown as soon as they called the play because, I mean, they've had the, little, the backer out there one-on-one. -on -one, and as far as I uh, expect from myself and the coach expect, nobody can guard me one-on-one. -on -one. And that's what, that was the whole thing going in with Cole. He says, you know, he, I like our chances with, with that type of a matchup. Uh, I didn't ask Fred, it, but I'll ask you. Your Aunt Randolph's tough. Uh, you know, he he runs a big game. Is 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 he their difference? Is he the guy that makes them that go? If if he's not there, do they win this football game today? Um, nah. I think he's he's one of those people that you never say a team is built off one man, but with him, if he's on, he's on. If he's off. I don't think Marshall really has it. But I mean, you have to respect him for what he does. You have to. I mean, he's a great back. And, I mean, the line blocks for him. He's patient in the backfield. So, I think he's just a very big factor. All right, your thoughts, Carson Newman, Saturday. Uh, kind of like what Freddie said. I mean, it's not my last year, but I've been here with all the seniors that's here. So, I mean, I'm playing hard just for them. We never won there, so it's good to start off something new. All right, Brian, unfortunate today. Good game for you. We'll see you next week. All right, thank you. That's Brian Marshall, our Applebee's chat. We thank our time for the Applebee's chat with Fred Jones along with Brian Marshall, who happened to be this year's co, now try, Offensive Players of the Week. Let's take a look at our Players of the Week from Mars Hill and Tusculum. Our Sodexo Offensive Players, Fred Jones, the senior from Appling, Georgia, 12 carries, 50 yards, and a touchdown, five career touchdowns for Freddie. 
Brian Marshall, the junior out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, seven carries, 58 yards, and a touchdown. He also added five receptions for 79 yards and a 48-yard touchdown reception for Brian Marshall. And we welcome B.J. Spradlin, the true freshman out of Greenville, Tennessee. He added seven carries, 50 yards. He also had a touchdown. This trio of running backs did not lose a yard in the game behind the line of scrimmage. Our Greenville Light and Power Defensive Players of the Week, Brian Alexander, the redshirt sophomore out of Union Point, Georgia, another big day tackling. He had nine tackles and a tackle for loss. He leads the team in tackles this year for the Pioneers as he has 82. Nick Smith, the sophomore from, as he calls it, Carter, Tennessee. We also know it as Seymour, Tennessee. He finished with a career best 10 tackles with a, hat, a hit behind the line of scrimmage, the lone sack against Louis Cruz on the day. He also recovered his third fumble of the contest, or his fumble was his third of the year. Our Green Coach Tour Special Teams Players of the Week, Byron Butler, the true freshman out of New Orleans, Louisiana, was great on punt coverage and kick coverage, and of course, Nick Smith, a sophomore out of, as we know it, Seymour High School. He blocked yet his seventh kick of the season. Just unprecedented. Once again, that national record stands at nine and two games to go for, as he calls himself, the Rad G. It's time for our Andrew Johnson Bank call of the game. Why not? It should just be called the Rashad Carter call of the game. Another great catch for the human highlight reel. Back to pass, and he's just going to air it out for Carter. Caught it, 15, 5, house, touchdown, Pioneers. Just let your All-American make a play, and Carter has made yet another one, and the Pioneers back on the board. It's time now for our Creekside Market post-game wrap-up. For the Mars Hill Lions, they ran for 376 yards, 55 carries, and Jonas Randolph touched at 49 of those 55 times in the game for Mars Hill. Again, school and conference records. 38 rushes, though, for the Pioneers for 168 yards. Quite impressive. Louis Cruz starting in place of Mark Rick's son, John Rick, who was injured in the LR game. He went 13 of 23 with a touchdown for 189 yards. The Pioneer Story Slave in 20 of 36, no interceptions for 306 yards with two touchdowns passing for Tory Slavin. Total offense, Mars Hill 78 plays, 565 yards. Tusculum 74 plays, 474 yards. Again, the fourth quarter dooming the Pioneers in time of possession. Mars Hill held it for 10 minutes to Tusculum's four minutes, 32 minutes for Mars Hill, 27 minutes for the Pioneers in the game. Third down's not good for Tusculum. Four of 12, Mars Hill was eight for 14, but in the red zone, Tusculum the perfect four for four, or Mars Hill was five for six on the day in scoring. That's our Creekside Market post-game wrap-up. This past Saturday, October 29th, the Pioneer family lost a dear member to a great support to Pioneer football. And lots of times the words, he was a great person or he will be missed, sometimes it's cliche and sometimes it's overused. Not in this case with John Doherty. John Doherty for the Pioneer football family and for Pioneer fans everywhere was one of those type of people. Always a guy that was willing to lend a hand in his time, in his effort, in his money and for whatever he did for Pioneer football. He was the guy that when they built this great facility here at Tusculum College, a slight design flaw in the broadcast booth as it is, he was the first person to come to me and say, we will get you the audio, we will get you the sound that you need, you just let me know what it is. As a matter of fact, when Frankie DeBus first stepped foot onto this campus, it was John Doherty that came to me and said, we need to do something, we need to get this guy on the air, we need to do a show, let me do it. He is the catalyst, he is the leader for the Frankie DeBusk radio show, which has been going on ever since Frankie DeBusk has been here, now currently residing on Tuesday nights at Applebee's. He was always the guy that came and gave all whatever he could give, such as Sundays, ice cream, whatever. Whoever showed up, they were fed. John Doherty made sure of that. Not only was he a great person or a great leader, he was a great family man and a guy who always gave to his family his time and his talent. So for that, Yes, he will be missed. And yes, he was a great person. And all of those cliches that you can add. The Pioneer family mourns the loss of a great leader and a great person. The guy that you could always see out there at the tailgate because he was always the guy setting up the tent first. Whether it was 12 degrees or 112 degrees, John Doherty was going to be there. 
So for everyone here at the Pioneer Sports Network, Pioneer Football, Pioneer fans everywhere, thanks, John. Applebee's 2 for 20 is back and fresher than ever. Whoa. Hey, Chris. Nice. Hi, Jesse. Hey. Ready to order? Yep, 2 for 20. One appetizer, two entrees, and layers of fresh flavor. So who's paying this week? Uh, call it in the air. Tails. <laughs> Pony up, Palmer. So come on in for new favorites like new creamy chicken fettuccine carbonara, new bruschetta chicken, or classics like the 7-ounce house sirloin. That's one appetizer, two entrees, 20 bucks. You got off easy, my friend. It's the freshest two for 20 yet, only at Applebee's. Now serving half-price appetizers late night. Creekside Market has three locations in southern Greene County to serve. So while you're traveling to or from any game, stop by and pick up a Hunt Brothers pizza for those football Friday nights or Saturday afternoons. Creekside Market, just off the 107, locations on the Asheville Highway, Camp Creek, and the Irwin Highway. Creekside Markets in Greene County. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System and electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Greene County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. This will be Heron. He'll keep it as he nearly he lost the football. Heron loses the football. I thought he had on the initial surge. It's Pioneer Ball. Nick Smith. What a game for Nicholas Smith from Seymour, Tennessee. B. Rad G here with the Frankie the Bus Show. Now I'm going to take it back to Brian Staten. So welcome back in to the Frankie DeBus Show. Yes, the Pioneers fall to Mars Hill by a final of 47 to 37, but you could almost say it's Super Bowl time coming up. Before we go there, just a kibosh on Mars Hill. John Rick didn't play. Uh, he wasn't going to play. Louis Cruz comes in, and I just think their game plan was just to hand it off. And hats off to him, you know, run with what got you there, I guess. Uh, Brian, I figured going into the game, regardless who was playing quarterback, they were going to give it to uh, number eight a bunch. And, uh, they did miss Rick a little bit, you know, being able to throw the ball here and there, but their quarterback did a great job controlling the situation, not turning it over. And uh, obviously Randolph's a good football player, and it was evident from Saturday's performance. We turn the page, and we turn the page to the state's second oldest football rivalry. It's Tunskillum versus Carson Newman. Now, we're going down to Mossy Creek. Haven't had a whole lot of success there, but talking to Fred Jones afterwards, and you guys just heard him say it, even Brian Marshall, uh, this is our Super Bowl. We want to be the first team to go down there and get a win. No question. It's uh, – I guess it's fortunate we are playing Carson Newman because the Tuscan Carson Newman rival is something special. Uh, we have uh, seemed to always get excited, get up, get up, have a great week of practice, perform like we want to perform weekly, and we've had some success. We've had some bad losses. We've had some good wins. We've had some good ball games. Uh, I hope that's the case Saturday. I know our kids are looking forward to it. Uh, it means a lot in recruiting. It means a lot for our staff. It means a lot for everybody associated with both programs. Uh, the blood drive's going on this week, and uh, that means a lot for all those people. It goes for, for a good cause. So it uh, should be an exciting football game uh, when the Pioneers and the Eagles face off. Unfortunately, we're not playing for anything. Neither one of us are quite having the year we would like, but uh, it's, it's going to be an exciting football game as always. Carson Newman's coming off a last-second win against Brevard, 27-24. to the, One of the top, well, actually the top running offenses in the league, the Brevard Tornadoes, and Carson Newman did a good job against them. But here you face another running style offense, that split back veer. It's been unstoppable in the past. Last year, the, I call it the doink game for Gareth Rollins. Uh, the ball just doinked right off the uh, goal poster. There's a win. So another high-scoring affair. Do you anticipate that Saturday? Uh, you know, this has been one of those years, Brian, I don't know what to anticipate. Uh, I, I do anticipate one thing that's been very evident, is our football team is going to play exceptionally hard. Uh, we're going to play like we're supposed to play. I just look, look and hope and, and, and make sure we can make the plays we need to to give us a chance to win. Uh, Carson Newman's got a good football team. They're having, living through some of the same injury issues and, and, and not sure. I'm sure they're saying they can't figure out why they're not as successful. But I know our kids will go give 110% like we've done all year. Uh, it's going to be a great ball game. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great afternoon. Uh, hopefully we can find a way to get a W. Unfortunate Saturday. Best of luck this week. Thank you, Brian. Pioneer coach Frankie DeBus for Coach Ken Sparks. Is just to echo some of those words. Losing records, usually not there at Carson Newman. You got to go back to 85 before a team uh, had four or even five wins on the year for those Eagles. We'll find out a lot more on Saturday. And, oh, by the way, in case you didn't pick up on it, when the Pioneers return home in two weeks against the Winget Bulldogs, there will still be another qualifier 
for the Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda Field Goal Contest because we haven't had a winner yet. So that car is still going to be there, and we'll talk a lot more about that next week. This Saturday, the Pioneers take on the Carson Newman Eagles. Join us on the Pioneer Sports Network from Mossy Creek in Jefferson City at Berktar Stadium. Our coverage will begin at high noon with kickoff at 1 o'clock back here on the Pioneer Sports Network and then the Frankie DeBus TV show back on the air next week to recap the contest. For everyone affiliated with the Pioneer Sports Network and the Frankie DeBus TV show presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda, for Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBus, for Zach Self, Nathan Humbert, I'm Brian Staten. Go Pioneers! This has been the Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk. The Gateway Ford Frankie DeBusk Show featuring coaches' interviews, player spotlights, highlights, and statistical breakdowns. Presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda, the home of the big deal. Located on the Elevity Bypass in Greenville. And brought to you in part by Applebee's, your neighborhood bar and grill. There's no place like the neighborhood. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Greenville, Morristown, Jonesboro, Johnson City, and Cleveland. Grand Rental Station, Anything you'll ever need to rent or buy. Consumer Credit Union, with three convenient locations in Greenville and Moss High. Creekside Markets, don't pass by, stop by, with three locations in Greene County. Laughlin Memorial Hospital, whatever you do, do it well. By Green Coach Tours, celebrating their 66th anniversary. Special consideration from Comcast Cable. The Gateway Ford Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network.